line weights very quickly. It's all about lighting. So if you have an object and it's a can, okay, in, in space, <laughs> on a surface, all right, with a light source. Okay, and we're going to ink this to make it look as three-dimensional as possible. Okay, we can put a thicker line furthest away from the light source and modulate it. And by modulating, I mean go from thick to thin. So this lid here casts a slight shadow, thinner over there, and if you notice, I didn't even draw the other side. I left it kind of open. So if you just do something very thin like that, okay. It's almost the light is so intense there, it's kind of knocked out that line. You don't even have to see the line. The eye will actually, the mind will actually uh, fill in the shape for us, right? And then this can, let's say, cast a shadow like this. We'll create a gray, like a gray four value out of five, All right? So that's pretty simple, pretty basic. Let's start with the basics. Thicker line away, thinner line closest to. Does that make sense? It better because I can't really explain it any any more simply than that. Okay. It's the same way this plane, the surface is black and this surface is either white or say a level two gray okay so do you understand this concept that in a two-dimensional drawing the only way we can create depth is by fooling the eye using black white and gray to create um, three-dimensional space and then we're creating this three-dimensional space using pure black, maybe 75% black, maybe 40% black, okay? All right? So you understand this concept of, of a thick black bar, semi-thick, and a less thick black bar. Even though they're the same size, this and this bar here, this one is perceived to be a thicker bar because of how dense the black is there, right? So then... If you're doing something like a shoulder, okay, which is a sphere, like a weird sphere, looks kind of like a heart, and then it has a tricep in here, which looks like a weird tooth, and then the bicep in the front, and then a uh, socket for the elbow and then the muscle that goes from this gigantic muscle right here uh, eh, eh. so there's that muscle there that I just showed you it goes from the back of the elbow across the f across the front part of the, of the forearm let me see if I can here it's this one right here oh I missed the line you can see it the lines right there all right and then there are muscles that come out of here. All right. So there's that tricep line that I was just doing right here. All right. That's this line right here. Got it? Okay, so here's the rest of that forearm down to the wrist. This is the back muscles. This is the uh, muscles that go to the neck, the side of the, right? This is the back of the arm, I don't know if you guys haven't figured it out. Light source is here. So again, the things closest to that light source, I'm going to have a thin line, or not even a line because it's so blown out. But the things away from this, especially if there's a shape, are going to cast a shadow. And that shadow is going to have a particular kind of shape because of... Um, the wider the valley, the wider the shadow, right? 
the the more sharply pronounced the cliff is, right? So if it's flatter here and it's the the valley's deepest here, it's going to create a it's going to create a uh, kind of a gaping shadow like that. This elbow socket's going to create a little shadow, right? And just like how we did a thicker line on that cylinder, this side in general is going to get a th thicker line because the light source is up here. There's reflected light that comes here. Reflected light is light that bounces. Light basically goes from that object, like ray particles, rays actually. The light hits walls or objects and bounces back this way with reduced strength. But what it does is it illuminates, you know, in general. That's why you get double, double lit things. So if there's a light source, you can still see things over here because there's light being bounced off of objects over this way. Or a second light source. Could be a second artificial light source. So rather than going and just doing one solid black line like that, you could do that here. But on this, I'm not going to do a solid black line up and down this whole thing. I'm going to go lighter at the top because of this bounced light that's coming this way. And just do something darker underneath like this. Okay? And then it gets lighter again because of the light's hitting it again or this light's hitting it. So I'll catch the underside of that bicep, the underside of this uh, shoulder muscle, underside of this forearm, this muscle that I drew here, we'll cast a little shadow, a couple things like that, okay? In general, most things get thicker towards the bottom. Here's where it gets a little tricky. And this, so this is line weights. All right, line weights is intimately involved with uh, related to shadows, right? So this is a line weight, but it's also a shadow. This is definitely a shadow. This is a line weight, okay? Once you have your line weights down, you start deciding, well, how heavily shadowed is this? Where is this light source? If there's an object, okay, and the light source is here, right? You're gonna, there's not really going to be a shadow on this, maybe a slight shadow over here. As this light source rotates around in space, right, three-dimensionally, right, that this shadow is going to become more pronounced. So when this light source is right about there, this whole thing is going to be black, right, and cast a shadow this way. Does that make sense? Better. All right, so the same thought is I have this cylinder. I have this light source. So depending on where this light source is will affect whether this is mostly black or hardly any black. So that's, if it's parked right about here, let's say it's parked in that position there, what happens is this sort of heart-like thing, the shadow creeps up like a sundial and you start seeing all these shadows that I placed elongate and then even connect up and if there's bounce lighting you'll get rim lighting here like that so that the shadows doesn't go, they don't go all the way to the edge but if you don't if you have a weak secondary light source or not much rim lighting it goes all the way to black here. Got it? And because this can look very graphical or kind of hard-edged, a lot of people would dither, dither the line with uh, a brush or a marker and create this kind of intermediary gray along the edge, kind of transitioning from a pure black to white. Okay, and you can do it kind of this like uh, alligator teeth kind of effect, or you can do something that's a little more pulled out if you want. All right, they accomplish the same thing. You can use a combination of both. A lot of people like kind of dithering and pulling lines out of it. Okay, but realize as you add lines, you're creating a gray value, but you're also creating a flatness. Right, depending on 
If the line is curved, you'll create curvedness, so I would suggest having a slight curvature to the line. But if you put something that's flat, you're laying down both a gray value and also creating a plane. You're flattening out this three-dimensional shape that is essentially tubular or cylindrical. So you just got to be careful and be aware of that. So I would suggest doing a slight curve, and I'm going to exaggerate it here. Hopefully you guys can see that. A curvature that I'm putting in. I'm exaggerating it, right? And that looks very rendered. It looks very kind of early 90s uh, Jim Lee or image style, whatever you want to call it. it. Kind of came from Barry Windsor Smith. But again, going back to the line weights, I'm going to do more of it towards the bottom of the form to add that weight. That's why it's called line weight. It's to create weight and uh, volume. And that typically goes to a black, right? Black value. So it's just about layering on texture in the service of creating shadows, creating values, creating weight, creating the illusion of light, all these things kind of uh, interact together. Okay, and then you can take uh, white out and you can work against your grays, create positive shapes on using white. In a crude laboratory in the basement of his home. Ah!